Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's tutorial we're going to paint this really fun, really easy little line and wash Easter bunny painting and it is perfect to make cards with or a painting. And by the way, if you want to sell your painting, I do not mind at all. Just please tag me in all your social media posts so I can continue to grow my channel and bring you better and more improved content. And thank you so much to at Fufu the Bun on Instagram for providing this adorable muse. And I'm going to use my Mozart watercolor palette and I just bought that on Amazon for $12.99. So you can use any watercolor paint set you have. Basically even children's watercolor would probably work because we're just going to keep this really simple. And I'm using Arsh Cold Press 140 pound paper. And if you don't have that kind of paper, you can use any watercolor paper. I do highly recommend to get the best results to work with Arsh watercolor paper or some other kind of cotton based watercolor paper. I tape my watercolor paper to Elmer's glue backing board with Scotch Magic Tape. Again, for my more serious paintings, I use the micropore medical surgical tape that I've talked about with the masking tape on top of that. And I'm using just a soft art type eraser to just get rid of the darker lines. I'm also going to use masking to mask out the letters Hoppy Easter. And if you don't want to put those that lettering in this painting, that would probably cut down your project time by about 20 to 25 minutes because you have to put on the masking, you've got to let it dry, you've got to really practice your lettering before you do it. So it adds a lot of complexity to the project. And you see I'm using a lot of purple, a lot of blue, and a little yellow added to gray it down. And I'm, I'm adding plenty of water. And I just keep mixing until it looks about right. I add some yellow, then it looks too yellow. So then I go back and add more blue, and then it looks too blue. So I add some purple, then it looks too purple. Then I add a little bit more yellow. So I just keep mixing it. And I'm getting it really water because I'm going to splash first. And you can use any paintbrush. I use this paintbrush that has longer bristles on it because I thought it would splash better. And I don't know if that's the case or not. You just might want to practice your splash technique before you start to. But uh, for a lot of my beginners, I think they're overwhelmed even by a blank page or a blank piece of paper. So putting a little splash detail down can kind of help break the ice and just get you going, get your creative juices flowing. Cause then when you see those splashes on the page, they look kind of cool and it's kind of gives you a little bit of excitement so that you can really jumpstart your creativity and just your uh, motivation to paint. For me, at least that really helps me kind of break the ice. I'm using my um, silver black velvet size eight round there and then I figured that it was a little it held too much water for the most part for this very small simple painting which I painted mine about six by eight inches so I ended up using just the cheap watercolor brush that came with this set and it had a good enough point on it then it really worked just fine and I decided to put in my black eyes first so the eyes I kept really simple. I didn't do any glints or anything. You can't really see much of the eye anyway in the reference photo. So that makes that really simple. That cuts down the time of this project a lot too. And of course, if you decide to put in your masking, it might be a good time to do it at this stage before we get too much painting done. I hadn't decided how I was gonna do the lettering. So I did the masking later, which you'll see but right now would be a good time to do your masking. You put your masking in and then you let it dry completely and then you're set to paint. And I'm just blocking in some of the details to kind of get the main parts of the bunny in using some pink. It really doesn't matter what colors you use for this because it's just a simple straightforward bunny. So I was just using whatever color looked right in my palette. My, it's a Mozart watercolor palette. Again, $12.99 on Amazon. If you need a link, please let me know and I will get you one. So I'm graying down my color a lot using yellow because what is across the color wheel from purple? Yellow. Yellow is the complementary color of purple. So 
that's how you figure out how to gray down purple. I didn't want a pure purple bunny, I wanted a gray bunny. So I just mixed some yellow with purple and I just kept mixing and adding a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple until I had the right gray that I liked. And here I'm painting on perfectly dry paper and again, I'm doing this because I want to just keep it really simple for my beginners and just enjoy the process of painting a bunny and not stressing out too much about it. So I would say this is about thick tea consistency. So somewhere between tea and milk consistency, depending on how dark you want your bunny, the darker you want it, the more paint you add and the less water. Sometimes you might have to dab out the extra water in your brush and then just scrub your paintbrush on the paint in the palette and then mix it to whatever paint you have on your mixing tray and just keep adding paint and not water to get it thicker. But see, I had a nice kind of lavender gray go in there. I thought that was pretty. And just take your time and really look at your reference photo. And one little tip I would say, you see like, for instance, I put a ring of white around his nose those little rings, those little nose liner, eyeliner, the thinner you can get those lines, like maybe one, one and a half millimeters wide, uh, that can really add a lot of refinement. It's almost like jewelry. So that can really make your bunny look way more professional if you get those little details really accurate. So you paint in the little pink nose uh, kind of a heart shape and then when you're painting the gray around it just carefully go really slow and make a thin white line around the parts of the nose where you want it. I also did that around the eyes to really add a nice little detail in the eye and then for me for my gray spots on his face while that gray is still a little wet I drop in a little bit thicker paint, not cream consistency, but just a little darker to just add some shadowing and some contours. You can or cannot do that. It, it's up to you. This is the style of this painting is not super realistic, so it's going to look fine whether or not you do that. And just a quick reminder, you can buy individual tutorials, including two other bunny tutorials, or you can join my Patreon if you would like to learn from me more in depth. I just wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz to my spots and a little bit more um, sophistication. And the way to do that is to make sure that your whatever little section of spot or bunny face you're painting when you're putting in these big gray areas is to not make it all a completely flat gray. And you can do that a couple ways. You can make some parts of the gray a little darker or you can add a little bit different color, add a little bit of purple to your mix, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, whatever you wanna do, just to change up the look of each little section so that you have a little variety in either the colors and or the values in each little section. And I do that while it's still wet, but you can also do it by glazing over dry areas. You can do it either way. So here I'm just carefully getting that ear liner really thin on that one side. The thinner you can get some of these little details, the more refined your painting's gonna look, the more impressive it, it will look. And then I'm, again, I'm painting these ears. I got a puddle there and then I dry off my brush and then go back in and sop up that puddle. You don't want a puddle. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna get some thick paint, cream consistency paint and just drop it right there in the bottom of the ear there to create depth that makes the ear look like it's going deeper into the ear canal there and that just adds a pop of nice pink and also adds some depth and dimension which again will add a little bit more sophistication to how your bunny looks. And again, I did the same thing there on that ear. So I'm doing, I'm putting it in T consistency paint on the ear, the pink part, and then I sop up any puddles and then I immediately go in with cream consistency paint, pink 
cream consistency paint and drop it in just to the bottom of the ear again. That's how I did that. And see how my gray kind of washed into the ear? That's a mistake, but it's a happy mistake because it just looks kind of dreamy when you have some edges kind of mix and blur together. And you see how razor thin I'm keeping that little white line between the gray of the ear hair and the pink of the inner ear. Um, I'm keeping that little white ear line really thin and the thinner and more detailed you can get that, the more um, refined and professional your painting is going to look. So take your time and get those little details uh, carefully painted. So again, the white of that ear liner is just dry white paper. So in these kind of paintings, the white of the bunny will always be the white of the paper. There, while that's still wet, I'm dropping in a little bit of darker ear bunny gray. And you can do it either way. You can do it while it's still wet or you can do a glaze if that area is dried. A glaze is just after a section has dried completely, you go back in with another layer of tea to milk consistency over that and put in a little darker detail. I did it wet on wet right there because I wanted it to melt and merge together a little bit to make it look more realistic. And here again, I'm still painting on dry paper which is completely different than the approach I usually take, but it's easier. And I just wanted this to be fun and easy and straightforward. So I'm just putting in the shadows and the contours. And you just wanna look at your light source. You can either look at the reference photo. If you're using this reference photo, you'll see that the light source is coming in from the bunny's right, our left. So that means the right side of the bunny is going to be darker. And I could have gotten my shadows on the right side of the bunny even darker. And there I put it, see how I painted in the shadows. And then for the darkest area at the very tip where his chest kind of meets at the bottom and it touches the top of the paw, I put in a drop of cream consistency into that shadow. And then that will bleed gently up into what I just painted and taper off in darkness as it goes up and just make it look really like a natural shadow. So again, you just use thicker paint with less water in it. Cream consistency, be sure to watch my cream consistency video if you haven't seen that to see what I mean. It just It's just paint with less water added and it makes it kind of the consistency of cream. So again, I'm trying to carefully get those details in around the face. Just look at your reference photo and do what the reference photo says to do. But use the reference photo to tell you how to draw the shapes of the spots and um, different aspects of the bunny's body and shadows too. All right, I'm getting some very watery paint over there. Do you see how watery it is? That's a puddle. That's really puddly. If I were to tip my palette up, that would all drip. I did a really good example of how that happens in my latest Calico Hat Loose painting tutorial. And at about minute 3.30, I tip up my palette and show you how the cream consistency paint sticks to the palette almost like glue. The milk consistency gets a little bead at the bottom, but it doesn't drip when you tilt up the palette. And the tea consistency paint dribbles all the way down to the bottom of the palette when I tip the palette up. Just to illustrate how different thicknesses of paint react. All right, now, the reason why I decided to do a gray background is because I wanted to, the white fur of the bunny to be the whitest white. And I didn't want my background to be the whitest white because I wanted the bunny to pop, pop kind of forward. 
or should we say hop forward? <laughs> but uh, so graying down this background and making it a little dark, I'm using very watery tea consistency gray. And you can see how I'm adding a little bit of different colors here and there just to keep it interesting so it's not a flat gray. But for the most part, it's gray. Painting carefully around the bunny and leaving some little white highlights too. You see how I left a highlight along that ear. But the reason why I'm doing this is so that the white of the um, bunny, especially in the face, is the whitest white in the painting. And what that will do is call attention to the bunny's face and the bunny itself when the viewer is looking at it. Because white screams for attention. So you want to make sure that when you have whites in your painting, you make sure you make those edges really nice, uh, really detailed, and put your whitest whites in the center of interest, whatever you're painting. But that is true of this bunny too. The whitest whites are going to be in the bunny's face and a little bit in his body. You can even get the background lighter than I am here. You can get it really light. But this will dry. Uh, watercolor has a drying shift and a drying shift is um, as the paint dries it gets lighter and the color usually grays down a little bit too. That's called drying shift. So I got it really tea consistency down there towards the bottom of the painting. So it created a bit of a gradient because I wanted the shadow under the basket to really pop out a little bit more. And while that's all wet, I painted in a soft shadow with about milk consistency gray paint. I would encourage you to mix your grays instead of using the gray in the palette because the gray in the palette will kind of be dead gray. Um, and when you mix your grays from purples and a little tiny bit of yellow and blues, it's more of a lavender gray, which is more attractive. And you can see how in the background I put some pinks too and a little bit of blue just to add interest. And you see how those spots that I splattered shine through the layer? Watercolor does that. That's why you can paint in glazes, which is like thin layers of um, color painted on top of each other. As each layer dries, you paint on another glaze, let it dry, paint on another glaze, and you can see all the previous layers kind of shine through each successive layer. That's kind of how watercolor works, and it makes it look really dreamy and ethereal if you use that property of watercolor. All right, I'm getting some thicker paint. Blues. And I'm spraying with my, uh, my spray bottle. If your painting gets too dry and you want it to be loose, you can give it a little spritz and here I'm dipping my fingers in my water and flicking just one flick of water onto the painting and this painting is in what I call the buckling stage where it's half dry and when a painting is half dry and you drop um, a watery brush bowl of paint or just clear water it'll create little cauliflowers and again I explained that also at about the same spot in that calico cat painting. How different, you can do different things depending on how wet your paper is. And right now that background is entering the buckling stage where it cauliflower. So that can create some cool textures if you just flick a little bit of water onto the background like I just did. And then I went in and painted some really dark cream consistency dots, spots on the cat's the cat, I'm used to painting cats, the bunny's side, that's cream consistency paint. And then, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see as it dries, as it, those little spots become half dry, I gave them a little spritz so they were softened a little bit so they don't look pasted on. Here I go with just a spritz. And I'm using a different spray bottle there, it's a misting spray bottle. And that will help those uh, spots just the edges of them to just blur out a little bit into the rest of the fur to make them look a little more furry and a little bit less pasted on. You can opt to skip that for this bunny because this style of painting is just a little bit more, I don't know what you would call it, graphic. It's not as realistic looking. 
and I'm touching the paper to see how dry it is to see if it's ready for me to paint some cream consistency, thinner line of paint directly under the basket to create a shadow. So I'm just mixing a gray and I'm going to put in a darker shadow where the basket touches the floor to give it a little bit of a pop, to ground it a little bit, to make it look a little bit more realistic. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. By the way, I used a liner or a rigger or a script brush. You could even use the tip of the brush that came with this kit. It doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you're using a brush that has a nice little point. And this brush that came with this set, I really enjoyed painting with it. It was really straightforward to use. Now, if you think your line is looking a little stilted, I think that line looks a little stiff, meaning the edges are a little bit too austere. You can shield the rest of the basket and just give it a little spritz with your little misting sprayer or spray bottle. All right, per the research I'm learning, I'm going to take a little break here because your attention span uh, tends to go down after about 20 minutes of intense learning. So let's take a break here. I'm going to end the video and we'll resume in session two and work on the lettering and the final details and call this done. I'll see you in a few. Bye.